This is the 2025 Nissan Kicks. Is it the ultimate subcompact crossover SUV to buy? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Orr Nissan in Shreveport, Louisiana to talk about the all new, fully redesigned Kicks for the 2025 model year. If you want to know more about this particular model, check out the link in the description of the video. And one thing that's brand new here that's never been offered before is all wheel drive available on the kicks for the first time as of 2025. Now this particular model is front wheel drive in the interest of fair reporting. And we'll find some new wheel designs. Uh, tell me what you think about this particular design. Is it something you like? What are your thoughts? And we'll notice a little bit more of a sporty look. I don't know that I'd say so much aggressive, but I do like what we have. You're gonna see some similarities to the Rogue and to the Pathfinder. We'll find full LED lighting here on the front end, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and you'll notice how the grill and the daytime running lights, the grill flows off of those daytime running lights, and we'll find the updated Nissan logo right here as well. And when we work our way here to the side view mirrors, you'll find the turn signal indicators built in. Gloss black mirror caps. We're gonna find that they're power adjustable and you can see your blind spot indicator. I don't know if that's showing up very well with the camera, but there it is. Now that little beep you heard has to do with me walking up to the vehicle with the remote. When I walk up, it will unlock. When I walk away, it will lock. Now you can go into your infotainment screen and change those settings. You can also use the button on the door handle right there to help out as well to open and or lock and unlock those doors. Roof rails up top, there is a panoramic sunroof. And here on the rear, a nice finish with the rear roof spoiler. You're gonna have your rear window wiper right here. And again, nice changes here on the rear. It has a nice, sporty, modern look to it, is what I would say. Your kicks and your SR logo back here. But you don't have the exhaust finishers back here. But I don't think anybody is going to be worried about that when it comes to buying their new kicks. What you're likely wondering about is the changes under the hood. Let's talk about that. Under the hood is the two liter dual overhead cam four cylinder. It's a naturally aspirated engine. And we're up from 122 horsepower to 141. 140 pounds feet of torque made it to an Xtronic CVT. So how about those all important MPGs? That's always important to know about. We're looking at 28 city, 35 highway, 31 combined, and 3.2 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. For those who are wondering, something I always like to share in my videos, something that not all of these car review videos share is the gas tank size. In this case, we're looking at 11.9 gallons. And here's a quick look at your remote. Kind of hard to see with that black on there, but we have remote start, something I know all of you are looking for, lock and unlock buttons right here. And then when you panic, there is your button. Let's talk about practical use. I'll open the tailgate here. Now it is not a power tailgate, but once you pull up on it just a little bit, the dampening takes over, makes it very easy. It goes ahead and opens the rest of the way on its own. We're looking at 30 up to 60 cubic feet of cargo space, and you'll have some cargo lighting on each side. A little bit of space down here behind the fender wells also. Now I know one question to be answered, well, there's the answer to that question. No spare tire, but you will find a tire repair kit. One thing that will be helpful that I think will be a popular feature among many potential owners is the fact that you are not stuck with just one particular height with your floor. Let's see if I'm talented enough to do this one-handed. There we go. So you can see how the floor actually changes position. So if you have something you need to haul back here and you need some extra height, Nice to know that you have quite a bit there. And one more thing before we hop into the back seat, just so you can see from this particular view, there is the panoramic sunroof. It does have a power shade that can be drawn back and forth depending on if you want to leave it in place or have the sun shining through. That front portion also opens. And before we hop into the interior and talk about that, here is your Kicks logo. I don't know how well that's showing up on the screen with it being overcast today, but hopefully my camera is picking that up. And we'll take a look into the interior as far as the design goes. That looks like carbon fiber. 
but that doesn't mean that's what it actually is. It really isn't. It just looks that way. And a comfortable armrest, at least by my opinion. We'll see our contrast stitching in two different colors right there. And the bottle holder for the rear doors. I'm gonna call that a bottle holder more than a door bin, but there is plenty of space there for a nice large bottle. And you can also see the contrast we have here with the seats and the different colors that we have here. We'll go ahead and hop on inside and take a look at what we have inside. Rear seat pockets on the back of each seat. That's nice to have. Competitors such as the Honda HRV do not have a rear seat pocket on the driver's side. And we'll also find the typical fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And while there's no rear air conditioning vents here, I don't think that's going to be a huge deal because you don't have a huge interior. Somehow we did survive in years gone by with very large interiors and no air conditioning vents found in the back seat of most vehicles. Imagine that. But you will find something back here that I think is going to be important to your rear seat passengers, and that is going to be the presence of USB connectivity. And for those who want to see a different view of the panoramic sunroof, there you go. And if you're curious, if you have that nervous passenger who's just nervously waiting for you to drop the hammer on 141 horsepower, there is an oh crap handle at each door. And how about that all important question of sticker price? In this case, $30,705, at least at Orr Nissan. Let's take a look at what else you get for the price and you'll find more space with the armrest here and with the door bin. Same look with the contrast stitching and all the typical controls you would expect to find here for locking and unlocking all of your doors. Your power side view mirrors, adjustable right here and obviously your power windows. You can lock and unlock those windows. When it comes time to open the hood, if you need to, well, there's the button or the release. I should say that's not really a button, but you do have a heated steering wheel right here. If you're curious about that. Also the lever right here, drop that like it is right there, drop it into that position and you can adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Now you will find manually adjustable seats in this case. So in case you're curious for the driver and the passenger, both are heated, but ventilated seats not available. The Bose audio system is also here. So I'm going to pair my phone later on and we'll let you have a listen. Hopefully that will be helpful for you. And as I reach down here, here is the button to start and shut the engine back down. But here are your animated graphics that come up on your dual 12.3 inch instrument cluster and your infotainment screen. So those two screens right there, very nice. We'll come back to that in just a second, but I did want to show you a couple of things here. Nothing unusual, but we have the control here for your headlights. Depending on what you want to do, you can turn them on and you can also go off right there, whatever you want to do or leave them on auto. That lever also serves another purpose. Some of you may know what that is and some of you might be wondering. Try that out when you're driving sometime and you're changing lanes or turning. Right here, well, I can't really say anything funny or sarcastic about that lever because you use that all the time when you need to when it's raining. That's how you control your front and rear window wipers. And a very comfortable steering wheel, at least based on my experience so far, that seems to work well. There's your updated Nissan logo and your steering wheel mounted controls. And as far as the instrument cluster goes a very nice look and i'm going to use the scroll wheel right here and just scroll through a few different things as you can see right there depending on what you want to see so pretty simple i would say we can also use the arrow and i'm just going to arrow over like that and then push the scroll wheel and we can go into settings so very easy to deal with you can see what all is here your driver assistance. I know a lot of you like to know about that, so let's go over that. We're looking at lane centering assist. We have lane assist, blind spot assist, emergency assist. Hmm, that could be a lot of different things. What kind of assisting with emergencies are we talking about there? Yes, it's okay to laugh. If you made it to this point in the video, you might as well. Parking assist and driver monitor. And then we go back and we'll just run through a few things here. I'm just arrowing over and you can see some of the things you can do here. Some of the changes you can go through and information. A very nice look, that's for sure. As far as the dash goes, 
I really like what we have here. You can see there is your fuel gauge right there. You can also see how many miles you can drive. And that is your odometer right there. So 13 miles right now. Probably going to add another three or four here in just a little bit on our test drive. And a very comfortable 75 degrees. I really like that a lot. And as you can see, there is your tachometer. If you're wondering, yes, there's a tachometer. Everything here is digital. And we can see that we're in park right now by that P. Go into reverse and then neutral drive. So we also can go over here to our infotainment screen. And while I'm at it, let's take a look at what we have with our camera views. Really nice, seems to be clear, at least based on what I'm seeing. We have the overhead view, and I do like the modern look and feel of the screen. There's not a lot here to talk about, but that's not a bad thing. You do have a lot of great technology and great features here, but not an overload of information. So that's nice to have, but you can see what you have here. And we can also go right here. Now, the good news about this, you can see everything with your air conditioning right here. That is not the only place you can control that. You can also control it here. So you do have basically what I would call physical controls, no knobs or anything like that, but you do have physical controls here. That's good for your heated seats and your fan speed, direction, all of that, that's here. Nice to know. Here's where you're going to come to pair your smartphone. Like I said, I'll be doing that in just a little bit. And I don't need the audio on because we don't need any kind of a copyright issue or anything like that. And if you're looking for your notifications, there's where your notifications are going to be. I think it's good that you have a nice modern look here and some very solid technology. But for those who are saying, you know what, Tom, I don't need an overload. I think this works very well. And we'll find our wireless charging pad right here. A couple more USB ports. There is your power parking brake and auto hold. If you want to use auto hold for this model, that's a good thing. And right here, Nothing new, it's just a little bit of a different look here as far as everything goes, but that's our drive mode selector. So pretty much looks the same as it did in the past. We're looking at sport, standard, and eco mode. And you can see the Kicks logo down there on the floor mats. In case you were wondering about that, somebody might ask, and so I better say something about it. And we'll notice that same design here with the dash area as we saw on our armrests with the front and rear doors. You have your good old fashioned glove box where I never find any gloves. We need to find another name for that. At least that's what I think. And as far as your upper console goes, there's what you're going to have. Here's how you're going to control opening and closing the power sunroof right there. And also that power shade I was telling you about, that button on the right hand side there. Now you'll notice that it does stop right there, but that doesn't mean that's as far as it goes. I'm just going to hit that a second time. And there we go. This is how easy it is to pair your smartphone. And it's going to work the same way whether you have an iPhone or an Android device. We're going to select the phone icon right there. And you can see that the instructions are on the screen. This is so easy. You almost don't need me to tell you how to do it or show you how to do it. But I'm going to show you anyway. So we're going to scroll all the way down. We see my kicks right there. We're just going to push that or select that. We're going to pair right there. And we'll just follow the prompts as they come up on the screen. Very easy to deal with. And then you can choose what you want to do. If you just want to go off of Bluetooth right here, you can. Android Auto, you can do that. In my case, we're going to use Apple CarPlay. And you can use USB if you want to. But we're going to go ahead and select CarPlay. I'm going to select Use CarPlay. And then we're going to say yes right there. Yes right there. And basically it's done. It's just connecting right now, as you can see. Let's see how long that takes. It shouldn't take too long, at least I wouldn't think. There we go, and now we're connected. And as promised earlier in the video, here is at least the best I can do for you as far as a sampling of the audio that comes out of the speakers in this Kicks. Okay, we're not going to go too far with that. Now, keep in mind, I did not make any adjustments whatsoever. So you could actually tune that to sound 
maybe a little bit better how you want it to sound, but that's hopefully good enough based on what my lapel mic picks up. And we'll get out on the road for our test drive with this fully redesigned Kicks. There have been some changes made to the suspension and the chassis, improved ride quality, and supposed to have improved noise cancellation. So it's real quiet in here right now, so you're going to pick up a lot more noise than you would otherwise. I don't think most people are going to drive around with zero noise in their vehicle. I may be wrong about that. I don't know, but the air conditioning, I've had the fan on low and the radio's not on, and I really don't have anyone to talk to, well, other than you. So I'm going to make a U-turn up here and we'll just let you listen for just a few seconds, but I can tell you that the ride quality does seem to be good. This road may not seem like it's too terribly rough, but there definitely are some spots where we can test that good tight turning radius, and now I'll let you listen for a few seconds. Now you might hear a few rattles and different things back there in the back. And that is going to be due to the fact that there are some things that are loose back there. A few things just sliding around. So when in a sport mode, I see a little bit of a difference. It does seem to accelerate better with sport mode. So that's always a plus in every situation. Very comfortable. The ride quality seems to be good to me. I like the tight turning radius. And I feel like I have a lot of room to adjust things far beyond what I have. You can raise and lower these seats with the lever on the side by simply moving that in the up position to bring the seat up, or if you want to go down, you can lower the seat, just like I'm doing right there by pushing it into the down position until it's where you want it to be. I'm going to bring it back up just a little bit. But overall, very comfortable. Now, I'm 5'10". A very common question I receive in my videos is, can somebody over 6 feet tall fit into a vehicle such as this Kicks? There is a lot of space above my head and a lot of room to go either direction. So yes, I would definitely say somebody over 6 feet tall can fit. Maybe somebody who actually has that experience can tell us down in the comments. But with the adjustability of the steering wheel, the adjustability of the seat, everything here, I have no doubt that if you're well in excess of six feet tall and you're considering the kicks as your next ride, the 25 version, that you should be just fine. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, you have very easy to learn and use technology here. That's always a good thing in any vehicle. It has a nice modern look and feel to it, but as I did mention, the good thing for those of you who maybe don't want an overload of technology here, you don't have an overload of technology. So we're going to go ahead and get on down the road here. Pretty easy to do. Now I'm not going to be able to do too much of an acceleration test because, well, we're turning right here. But overall, I definitely would say if I was in the market for a subcompact crossover SUV, that this would definitely be something I would consider. Does it have enough horsepower, you may ask? Well, if you ask me, nothing has enough horsepower, but that's just the way it goes for me personally. But I think that you'll find that this model does a great job of getting down the road with no problems whatsoever. A very fun vehicle to drive, that is for sure. Okay, tell me what you think about the 2025 Nissan Kicks. Is it the ultimate subcompact crossover SUV to buy? Tell me what you think. And tell me what you were hoping for that maybe isn't here. Is everything here that you were hoping for? Tell me down in the comments section. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Or Nissan for loaning me this Kicks for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.